All right, what's up, you guys? I'm gonna show you how to use these, get one of the other ways to use these. These are fibers, but I'm gonna eventually uh, get myself a set of tanners. I was too damn much of a cheap ass to go and order these. But you could buy a set of hammers too, which I was still gonna do. Go shopping for different size hammers and mallets in the tool store or at your uh, Home Depot or Lowe's. Different price ranges too, because people use hammers, but I've used this. I'm comfortable with this kind of exercise because these actually resembled mallets that I worked in uh, the industrial work with. But uh, before I go on, I was going to say too that if, say, you've you got a set of fibers, you can use them individually like this or both like this. And even if you have a set of tenors, you might want to just hold two of these like this or even hold two tenors like this because to get in a habit of gripping. Uh, multiple objects, say you're in a workplace and you're carrying tools. I carried bunches of hammers and handfuls of crowbars. My old videos in my old home, I had like exercises I was doing like this with like, any of you guys were with me since fucking 2012, there's a few idiots out there. Uh, remember I had some of my old ass videos, I was using like four crowbars in one hand and all kind of shit like that. I want to bring resurrect stuff like that. But, uh, but yeah, but while I'm at it, I'm going to stop and say, too, yeah, the industri let's talk about that, this industrial work I used to do, because this kind of matters. Why I'm so comfortable with stuff like this and hammers, too, because there was stuff I used shaped like this. There were mallets that I used in industrial workplace. You can use hammers, too. There's different, so many workplace factories, hammers and mallets that are shaped like this. And I'll tell you a small story. This might be boring as hell to you, but... Um, it's, um, I, one of the jobs I did, if I, any of you guys followed my other videos, the stuff that I used to manufacture, uh, good money at the time, and they were selling for several thousand dollars a piece, and that dovetails into all that political shit about wages and all that, and how companies, if they have it, they give it to you, but anyway, one of the other things I used to help manufacture, okay, involving, uh, mallets that were shaped like this, and yeah, you start, before I ever got into stuff like this, I started noticing that it's an exercise, different weight class of these, right? So anyway, um, the mallet I used to do, I'll subscribe, subscribe, oh yeah, you can subscribe if you want, but I wanted to say describe, not subscribe, that was my mistake. But okay, describe uh, something I used to do, okay? Table across here, right? And there was pieces of vinyl that extended out like certain types of curtains and screens that we would make you know, for some of the loading dock doors, different variations, okay? So, there was a thing called a grommet tool. First of all, you'd have the cutter for the grommet hole, right? Would go across there, so you want to put grommets in there. But there's machines that do it too. But you could do it by hand. Or even if you had some of these guys wanted to fix a camping tent out there, or an outdoor tent for a picnic, you wanted a grommet, you could buy a grommet tool in a store, different ones, but... The factor we used to do, okay, grommet cutting tool, like this, you hit it like, doink, 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 and then say there would be, after you cut that little hole, right, um, there was the, uh, you could technically almost use a tool like a paper, the way a paper punch, but the vinyl was too thick, so you had to go doink, 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 okay, so, all right, you're with me on that, so then after we punched the hole, there, there would be this die you put, right under each hole that you punched, okay? And there was a thing like a center punch. But first you would put the lower part of the grommet in, like put it through here, and then there was the other grommet that you put, you put the one under and the one over, right? The the, the washer that would go on there, like we'd go on there and right there, right? So one under here, one over here. And make sure the hole was lined up. There was this thing, it was like a die, like this big. And there was a thing that was like a center punch, you know, you shove it, shove it right in the hole and you hold it like it's like you're hitting a center punch or, I don't know, railroad spike. And then I would take the mallet or hammer, doink, doink, and then the grommet would be secured, you popped in there. And then just move on, do each hole like I said too, and put a grommet. That's how we use a grommet tool by hand. But anyway, that's a small, boring-ass story that why I was familiar with shit like this, different weight classes and 
say if you were making a whole bunch of things like that, you know, I mean, you were the one using the grommet cutting thing. If they had a whole high volume of it, you weren't doing it all yourself. If they had a whole bunch of ones, you'd be using the grommet cutter and a grommet tool and do it, say, on a couple of orders. But if they had a whole bunch, might have you just, you'd be having a mallet in your hand, maybe either on the grommet cutter, put it aside somebody else, you know what I mean? And Matt, you would, if you were doing this all day, this could weigh even three pounds and you'd be feeling it in tendons and wrists over here, especially when you're a slender or built person, not maybe a uh, more, uh, what do you call it, a uh, huskier person and all that stuff too. So then that gives you, you can have strength for your size, but then did other construction stuff, different things too, clean up later on in life and got used to carrying bunches of tools. So this is nothing to me. Plus, Unlike big ass weightlifting sets, if you ever had to move and go to a new home, you can pack this shit away. You know what I mean? And then I have another set that you guys saw. I worked at a scrapyard once. I used to use sawed off uh, weightlifting bars because I got them for practically nothing in the scrapyard. And then the bars, the four bars that I still have now. Uh, but yeah, it was nice to get a whole set of this. But right on with that. You know, just like. Simple stuff like this, like you're hitting something even, even to put your hand there. You can even go like this. But don't grind your wrist out because you'll be feel, you can feel that if you uh, snap your wrist too much, get too wild with it, go like this. But if you wanted to do something like, um, imagine a drum being hit, boom, 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 or like I said, like you ever watch Ben-Hur with uh, Charlton Heston in the movie Ben-Hur, there was when he was a prisoner on the galley ship. Running speed, you had a Roman soldier over there with the two hammers. Boom, 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 boom. Hey, if you guys wanted to play a game like that for a, a um, little bit of fitness club you're doing too, have somebody do it on the hammers or a drum, and then all your people would be on, doing, doing. To the rhythm of the uh, drum or the hammer person or whatever, you know, something like that. But, but, then different, like the, the rhythm, if you kept that rhythm long enough, you're going to be feeling that in here, even though you don't got the big ass forearms like you like to have. Uh, it makes a difference, I'm telling you. And then holding it up like this, doing a bunch of these. Boring as shit, you know, watching somebody do a whole video with that. But then, you know, your new dynamic here holding like this. Well, see, I'm in a chair right now so that I could, uh, Set this camera over here and, but yes, do this in the chair, you know. Then there's the other way too that you go and like this, but um, I do that with the larger ones. Like you do with a larger item, you're swinging it like I've been doing a lot with my bigger items. But there's a thing too, doing it slow and then letting down slow. This makes like a lot more difference when you're out there in life because you're going to be picking something up and then say, okay, and then say you got to walk like across a, a field or across a warehouse with a couple of tools. You can either hold it like this or some day, days like um, if it's maybe a larger tool, pry bars, different kind of things or you might want to hold, carry it over your shoulder like this so you may want to do an exercise. Don't swing it and bust your collarbone. You know, if you do an exercise like that, you don't want to be swinging. If you think you're going to do that, put your hand here or something. Or, or if you want to have maybe your, uh, if you're into that LARPing and all those medieval uh, club things and that LARPing stuff, you might want to put your little costume armor right over here and so you don't bust your collarbone. So that's why uh, I don't believe in all that flipping it around like a madman like some people do with those things. There's a... There's a uh, letting down, pick it up, and letting down easy is actually does just a bunch of the exercises, uh, pick it up. Yeah, there was like this one hippie guy a long time ago when I went to a weightlifting gym when I was younger, he, even with a barbell, he was saying letting down is just as important, does just as much for you as uh, going up. So There's a lot of people, they do the macho thing too, that doing a lot of leg presses, a lot of this and that, and slamming it down, you see that all over TV. But uh, you might be in a 
have neighbors in your house or you're up in the second floor of a house or apartment. You don't want to be having stuff like this and slamming it down. So you may want to um, respect people's quiet and not have the ceiling. Your floor is somebody's ceiling, right? And he's slamming down and just say, if you have a landlord, there's going to be cracks there and somebody's going to be bitching, you'll be evicted or even if it's family house. You know what I mean? So there's an item about doing your stuff quietly and you set it on the floor quietly because that's an exercise in its own, setting a heavy object without banging it or something. Or you may have tools you're working with a contractor or somebody that gives you a job assignment or something and you're carrying something you don't want to bust. Whether it's an outdoor environment, somebody's company or, or somebody's driveway and heavy items, you don't want to just throw them down any old way. Be graceful because you crack your concrete, that costs them money. And, you know, you get fired, you get really bitched at or fired or somebody has to pay to actually... You, there's a lot of incentive, you know what I mean, about being having the excuse to let something down easily too. That's like even stuff like this, you know, too. Um, you start out smaller. You got like a wrist that that's why you can uh, look don't even look like you can pick up as much, but yet there's the wrist flexibility going on. This is really stupid shit. If you had two like this two sets like this, and then do all kind of turning. You do the, Well, this is stuff you'd be doing while you're sitting watching TV, right? And it don't look like much, but if you're doing it for anything you're doing, like for a while, you're going to be feeling it, you know what I'm saying? It's like if you're watching TV anyway. Uh, but these are very uh, nice things to have around. Uh, you know what I mean? So, but then you can do other things with them too. Like, But if you're around, you have a lot of equipment that you handle, whether they're yours or, or not, or if it's in a workplace. or You have a house in your tool shed. You might give you a good incentive to get yourself a nice collection of sledgehammers, ha like actual hammers and then um, larger sledgehammers, um, them pry bars, the larger pry bars, like I said, everything I do with a baton that I'm doing for the flexibility, that baton is also a staff too. So, you know, uh, one of my other videos, I don't got one of them metal bars like I used to in my old home. It did not belong to me. It was my stepdad's, but so I used a broom in one of my more previous uh, things, but yeah, it's there's no limit. Some people train with club, club bell alone. If you got this far, and I'm trying to tell you, club bell alone, it's everybody else's club bell techniques. You know, they're better than me and all that, but there's all kind of other ideas, but you're, my thing, you're not limited to things like this. You know, the hammer, you got the different crowbars, the pry bars, and then, then all the way up to like a 20 pound, uh, 20 pound pry bar that's like freaking four foot long that you use to be, yeah, what's, that I've been used before, like you know how you use a post hole digger, right? But there's that, that other bar we used, and multiple uses. You use it for prying, but I've used it to scrape out the inside of a, knock the, the rocks out of it when you dig a post hole. I did that when I worked somewhere a long time ago. Put benches in there, where the benches you stick in the ground, we took a post hole digger and well, I made to post hole digger and you know how people put those fences around uh, outside of a building, the air conditioning unit, then they want to put a fence around it, whether it's a plastic fence, a post hole digger to dig that, but I used the, you know, that pro, that bar, that multiple used bar of 20 pounds, crank your wrist with that too. And I get my uh, one heavier bar that's like this big right, right? the two ones I use. I'll show you a video, I'll do splits with tape, put that over my head yet. But yeah, I could put that over my head while I'm doing splits, you know what I mean? As long as I keep at it. That's all your options.